A blessed morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Carmelite Monastery. Today is the second day of Advent. Dear brothers and sisters, John the Baptist appears in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The prophet's voice should awaken us from spiritual lukewarmness. Like the people who listen to him, we should get up on our feet and go to meet the Lord. But first, we have to look deep within us and realize that we are unprepared to meet him. The mountains of our pride and our sinfulness the valleys of our preoccupation with the things of this world make for an uneven path. We have to make ready a straight path for the Lord by renewal and conversion. Let us now rise and welcome our Lord Jesus Christ in the person of this minister, Reverend Father Roy Christian Hisulgon. shall now light our second Advent candle. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. From Isaiah's Book of Consolation, we hear God's words of comfort for his people exiled in Babylon. God has forgiven their sins and will bring them back to their homeland. The call to prepare the way of the Lord in the desert is echoed in today's gospel. The first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for your God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up to a high mountain, Zion, Herald of glad tidings, cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with the power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, and leading the ooze with care. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Peter pictures the coming of the day of the Lord and instructs us to prepare for this day by our repentance and by a holy and devout conduct. The second reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay His promise, as some regard delay, but He is patient with you, not wishing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away, with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to His promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before Him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all rise. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his path. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way, a voice of one crying out in the desert. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed, One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We are now on the second Sunday of Advent, and last week we were reflecting on the invitation of Holy Mother the Church 
that we enter into this uh, disposition of the heart, a heart that is uh, prepared for the coming of Jesus. And that disposition happens in time and space. That's why our prayer last week was for God to provide us with this kairos, a time of grace to ready for His coming. My dear friends, on the second Sunday of Advent, we are given another image of this time or season to encounter ourselves and God. And the image that is provided us is the image of the desert. Advent is to be a desert experience for all of us. And what do we find in the desert? It is clear that we are to seek God. It is clear that in this Advent, we long for Him. And it is clear that we are to find Him. What do we expect to find in the desert? Our Gospel for today gives us one important figure that we can find in the desert, a prophet. My dear friends, our time needs a prophet. And prophets do come, especially in difficult and challenging times. They give us a way of seeing what the Lord wants. They give us a way of seeing a life that is pleasing to the Lord and how we have been so different in terms of living out what we are supposed to live out. They provide us with a mirror as to what God wants and how we are in relation to what God desires. That is the purpose of a prophet. A prophet reminds us of who we are and who God is. And so, as I have said, prophets do appear in those important times in our lives, in challenging times. Allow me to read from this book. The author is Robert Wicks, and the title of the book is Touching the Holy, Ordinariness, Self-Esteem, and Friendship. And he gives a very good description of what this desert experience is all about and what do we expect out of this experience. On page 39, allow me to read. When we sit prayerfully in silence and solitude, we are entering the desert, our desert. In this sacred space, the goal is not to hide from others, devoid of pain, or to hold ourselves apart from and above the community in which we live. It is to receive the grace, to learn to face ourselves directly, so we can learn to live ordinariness, so to live ethically and generously with others. And he cites or gives us an anecdote. The following little story illustrates how well the desert fathers and mothers knew about the value of silence and solitude. And he quotes, In Shetis, a brother went to see Abba Moses and begged him for a word. And the old man said, Go and sit in your cell and your cell will teach you everything. Beautiful. At times, when we talk about the desert, we want to go somewhere else, far from our community, far from our families, even far from our day-to-day -day activity. 
But actually, according to Robert Wicks, the desert can also be found in the ordinary. When we enter into prayer, when we enter into solitude and silence. And there in that desert, we are afforded to find God. But not only to find God, but also ourselves. And I believe that is the first thing that we find in a desert. Ang atun kaugalingon. Ourselves. As a matter of fact, our opening prayer for this Sunday gives us the tone for this liturgy. Anong aton opening prayer? We prayed at the opening of this Mass the following words, that no earthly undertaking be a hindrance to those who set themselves to seek the Lord. That is the first thing that we are to find in the desert, ourselves and the hindrances that we have. Pagano ini mga hindrances, di ka nami sa Advent kali ang una mugit masumalang aside sang propeta ang imo kaugalingon na kag ang mga upang sa aton. Pang sa pagkakita sa Dios. That's why it is good that in Advent we start with that self, and we hear the challenge precisely in the letter of Peter in his second letter, which is our second reading. I'll read those uh, words. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before Him at peace. Beautiful. When we find ourselves, let us be honest with our spots and blemish. Tika nami ang ginapatubo sa ato sa Adventu una sa tanan ano? The penitential character of Advent. The color of the church is also the color of Advent is also the color of Lent. We have to ask pardon for our sins. That is part of the preparation, my dear friends. When we see ourselves, we have to be honest with ourselves. That is what the desert does to us. Kaya nga, ara lang bila sa disyerto ang mga essentials. Ara lang bila sa disyerto ang imo lang itkin ang lanon. For so many times you have attached yourselves to all of these things as if they are important and essentials in your journey. But now in the desert you are to realize what is truly important. And that is the point of our first reading. Where are we to seek comfort? Who can give us comfort? Who can give His people true comfort? Only God can give us true comfort. The prophet Isaiah in our first reading has this to say, Comfort, give comfort to my people, says God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at hand. Her guilt is is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. And now we see the context of the people of God. They're also in a journey. They have now discovered themselves. They have sought God in so many things. As a matter of fact, they've experienced this exile to Babylon. But the comforts of a foreign land cannot comfort them. Only God can provide them with true comfort. And where is their comfort? In their true home. And that is Jerusalem. Kanami, isang symbolism sa Jerusalem. Para dira ang Mount Zion, the temple of the Lord. 
That is where we are to find God. That is our true home. For how many times that we have been hindered in seeking God by all of these things that the world offers. Ibis nga kadasig sa itong magpuli, sa itong matuod nga balay, naglibot-libot pa kita ka nagtalang-talang. Kung diin-diin pa na itong ipangita ang Diyos. The first thing that we find in a desert experience is our true selves. And Advent calls us to be honest. And not simply to be honest, to be responsible and acknowledge our guilt before the Lord. Lord, sorry, gid, nagtalang talang pa ko. Lord, sorry, gid, nalipat ko nga ikaw lang gid ang makahatag comfort sa ako. Mm-hmm. Second aspect of the desert experience, kay ang tao malipaton kinahanglan sang propeta. Thus the figure of John the Baptist, he appears in the desert to remind us of God. Interestingly, John the Baptist is clothed in camel's hair and is simply consuming locust and honey. For some Bible scholars, they would uh, interpret it as a form of asceticism. But for Raymond Brown, he tells us it is not so much about asceticism, but it is actually an imagery of purity. That John the Baptist, since his birth, was a person dedicated to God. He is to be pure. Nati kanami. Ba kung arang propita, masilig kagin, kalayo sa ako niya sa purity man. Ara, John the Baptist, pure, dedicated to the Lord, consecrated to God. And that brings us to the message of John the Baptist. His message is one of conversion. Prepare the way of the Lord. And to prepare the way of the Lord, we have to go back to His ways. I was looking at uh, the Acts of the Apostles and I discovered that the early Christians, aside from being called Christians, they were known as people of the way. You can find that in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 1 to 2. Christians are people of the way. This is not surprising as a description of Christians because Jesus once said in John that I am the way, the truth, and the life. When we are lost, we are completely out of the way. Di ba la? Ang talang-talang na iyan, nadula pa sa imo nga way. Di kinanglan sa sining advent, magbalik sa way. And who is the way? Jesus. So when we prepare for the coming of the Lord, we ask ourselves, what are the ways of God? And how, in so many times, have I deviated from the ways of the Lord? And that is the role of the prophet, to remind his people, remember, O Israel, remember, O people of God, This is the way of the Lord. Yet you have lost your way. We thank the Lord for the gift of John the Baptist. Because he reminds us of who we are, what is God's purpose for our lives. And at the same time, he's a constant reminder that we should not lose our way. In short, 
we should not lose our purity before the Lord. We are a dedicated people to Him. And how, in so many ways and so many times, have we forgotten that? We need a prophet to remind us of that. So, my dear friends, we thank the Lord for the second Sunday of Advent. This Sunday, which is an invitation for all of us to enter once more into the spirit of prayer, a spirit of solitude and silence, our own deserts, in order for us, one, to find our true selves, and second, to be reminded by a prophet that at times we have been wayward, we have lost our way. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of your reminder. And may you help us to continue to find our way to you. May this Advent be an experience of a true homecoming in your presence. Amen. Let us now rise and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The Lord is faithful and does not delay in keeping His promise of salvation. With confidence, let us pray to the Father. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For the church like John the Baptist, who pointed to Christ, may the church point out with fresh vigor to the men and women of today that Jesus is the Redeemer of humanity and the Lord of history, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear our prayer. For government and civil leaders, like John the Baptist, who profess his worthy unworthiness to stoop and loosen the thongs of the Messiah's sandals, may they recognize their own sinfulness and unworthiness and experience God's gift of conversion, we pray. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For consecrated men and women, like John the Baptist, may they prepare the way of the Lord through their acts of service to the least of our brothers and sisters, we pray. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For those who, for a long time, have stayed away from the sacrament of reconciliation, may they experience the season of Advent as a time of renewing the relationship with God and continuing Christ's mission of love and service, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear our prayer. May our family members, relatives, and friends who have died experiencing everlasting joy in the company of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear our prayer. We also pray for the repose of the soul of Jutai Lopwe, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear our prayer. prayer. 
Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and for our own personal intentions. We pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, without you, we can do nothing for our salvation. Warm our hearts and strengthen our resolve that we may live for you and for one another. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming, and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Oh, no. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again, we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Patricio, our Bishop, be sent there, Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, Saint Sebastian, Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, Saint Pedro Calongsod, Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus, Saint Teresa of Avila, Saint John of the Cross, all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you, dear Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now call upon God, our Father. Give us this day our 
grant peace in our days by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen.
Please all rise. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all kneel for the Arasho Emperata. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask for protection against the COVID-19 that has claimed lives and has affected many. We pray for your grace, for the people tasked with studying the nature and cause of this virus and its disease, and of stemming the tide of its transmission. Guide the hands and minds of medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion, and of those government and private agencies that must find cure and solution to this pandemic. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Mary, help of all Christians. Saint Raphael, the Archangel. Saint Rock. Saint Lorenzo Luis. Saint Pedro Palungsod. Please all rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May mighty God bless you and your loved ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist has been offered. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.